Hello there. I couldn't not do that to start this video off. All right, we finally have our very first teaser trailer for Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I'll tell you what, there is a lot riding on this show. Ever since it was announced that Ewan McGregor is coming back to reprise his role from the Star Wars prequels for this limited series, people have been hyping it up. Or if not hyping it up, then at least definitely talking about it. So yeah, we have a limited series coming. Limited means it's only going to be one season. And it's going to center around Obi-Wan Kenobi. You know, the character from Star Wars. This series is actually going to take place at the halfway mark between Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, and the original Star Wars film. So 10 years, 10 years after Revenge of the Sith and 10 years before A New Hope. So at this point, it's been 10 years since the Jedi Order fell and the Empire took over the galaxy. Obi-Wan's whole life was the Jedi Order. If you've seen the prequels or better yet, watch the Clone Wars, you know that Obi-Wan devoted his life to being a Jedi. Anakin Skywalker was his best friend, if not brother. And he's the one who of course became Darth Vader and ultimately brought about the end of the Jedi Order. So at this point in his life, Obi-Wan should should be in a very dark place emotionally, which should be really cool to see, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, the trailer starts off, he's on Tatooine, because at the end of Revenge of the Sith, he told Yoda, he's like, I will bring young Luke Skywalker to his family. I will take the child and watch over him. And so, sure enough, the beginning of this trailer, that's exactly what he's doing. We actually see the Lars homestead, and we see young little 10-year-old kid Luke Skywalker, which honestly, I was hoping to see, but not expecting. So that was a nice surprise. Cause I mean, this kid, he's gonna be the biggest hero in the galaxy one day. I just hope he's a better actor than Jake Lloyd. I'm just saying. Come on, even if you love the prequels, you have to admit, Jake Lloyd's acting was not that good. Anyway, then we see Ewan McGregor is back as Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's all scruffy now. He's been living in exile on a desert planet for 10 years. Honestly, I did think he would look scruffier. I mean, has he reached the point where he has that old place up on the hill? Are people calling him crazy yet? Like Uncle Owen described him in the original film? Oh, that wizard's just a crazy old man. I don't know. But I will make a prediction and say that this series will probably show us where the name Ben came from. Like, why does Obi-Wan decide to go by Ben Kenobi by the point of the original film? I'm personally hoping this series answers that question. And then the music cues up and immediately I was like, ah, oh, crap. It's Duel of the Fates. I might be in the minority here, but I was never a huge fan of Duel of the Fates. I just thought it was always a little too overdramatic for my taste. I mean, it works in this trailer to give that sense of nostalgia, and of course combining it with Battle of the Heroes, which I actually do like. I was like, okay, so Obi-Wan is still reflecting on his time in the Jedi Order. He's still thinking back to his big fatal duel against Anakin. I mean, this is a man whose entire life has crumbled down around him. He has nothing anymore, really. Again, he's in a really dark place, which is the part of the show that I am looking forward to. But then we get to some stuff in this trailer where I was like, uh, I don't know. We see the Grand Inquisitors are still around. And look, I know the Grand Inquisitor is from the Clone Wars, but A, I thought they were all wiped out. And B, what are they doing in this show? I get it, during this era of the Star Wars timeline, the Empire is in control, they're sending troops all over the galaxy, there's Jedi hunters out there, and they're looking for the last remaining Jedi who survived Order 66. Of course, we know a few of them who do make it. Caleb Doom, Ahsoka Tano, Obi-Wan. So really, there's no tension in Jedi hunters being in the show at all, because obviously Obi-Wan's not gonna die. But it's the fact that we see Obi-Wan on another planet, that was a thing that really made me go, I'm not sure about this, guys. Yeah, straight up, I'm just gonna be honest, I don't like the fact that Obi-Wan leaves Tatooine. I mean, maybe I'm just being closed-minded because this is supposedly retconning what I thought I knew, which was Obi-Wan stayed on Tatooine for 20 years watching over Luke until he was ready to learn the ways of the Force. But no, now we're learning at the halfway mark, Obi-Wan had this whole sci-fi adventure quest off Tatooine. Uh, okay, I mean... Writers, I really hope you know what you're doing. This better work, because I have my doubts. I really do. We also see that Joel Edgerton is returning from Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith to play Owen Lars. So maybe he will have, like, a part to play in this story. If they're bringing back Joel Edgerton, who's made a pretty big name for himself since Attack of the Clones, he's a well-established actor. So I do wonder how big Owen's role is going to be in this miniseries. Same goes with Baru. And when the title comes up, we hear that signature sound effect. You know the one. Yeah, boy, it's Vader. 
again. So yes, it has been confirmed that Hayden Christensen is reprising his role from the prequels as Anakin Skywalker, or at this point he should be Darth Vader. Now, I do not hide the fact that I think Hayden totally sucked in the prequels. He's honestly one of my least favorite things about them. But in conversations I've had with friends recently, they've actually defended him. They're like, no, he's actually a good actor. It's the writing that was bad. And so to their credit, they could be right. Because honestly, the writing in the prequels was just downright terrible. So hey, you know what? This could be Hayden's chance for redemption here. He could absolutely blow us all away by going, boom, this is what acting looks like when it's not a shitty script. I would honestly love that. I would love to be proven wrong. Like if Hayden Christensen is honestly actually good in this series, I'll be like, oh, I'm a dick. I'm sorry for ever bad mouthing you. Your character in the prequels was not your fault. It was George's. I'm rooting for him. Plus, of course, it's always badass to see Darth Vader again. And I hope that James Earl Jones is back to voice him. Because, I mean, it's Darth fucking Vader. The greatest cinematic villain in history. So just the fact that he's coming back to live action once more... That can get me excited. If for nothing else, I just can't help but be curious, you know? I wanna see. In the end, this is how I see it. This upcoming Obi-Wan Kenobi limited series is the true bridge between episodes three and four. Yeah, sure, we've had Rogue One and Star Wars Rebels and Solo. We've had a bunch of stuff take place between those two movies. But this, this is the one character who plays a big part in both of those movies. No one else shares that with him. Well, except for Vader, I guess, but he's gonna be in this too. So the way I see it, if you have nothing else between episodes three and four, if you don't have Rogue One or Rebels or anything, the one thing that should matter is this Obi-Wan limited series, because he is the character that carries over from Revenge of the Sith to the original film. This is the connecting piece that has been missing. Now, this is not me saying I think the series looks great. There are definitely some things I am worried about. In fact, this series could be really good or really bad. This teaser trailer had some things where I was like, yes, that's really cool. I wanted to see that. And then it had some other things where I was like, I did not want to see that. So it's give and take. I don't really know what to think. I'm optimistic, yet also skeptical. I'm rooting for it to be good. I want to love it. I just had to be honest about my doubts. I guess only time will tell. So the teaser trailer for Obi-Wan Kenobi. Have you watched it yet? What do you think about it? Do you have the same doubts that I do, or are you more optimistic or more skeptical? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And of course, thank you for subscribing. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go watch West Side Story on Disney Plus for the millionth time, because it's just so damn good. Peace!